All right, you guys. It's Ross the Fig Boss. So I thought, uh, because we've been doing so many fig reviews as of late, I just have so many varieties, whether they're new, a variety that really impressed me, or actually a variety that didn't impress me, uh, I decided just for kind of like, you know, not really science, but like to be a, um, you know, someone who is uh, approaching this in a very serious way, I wanted to make sure that I put those videos out to you guys and, and had, you know, covered them. Um, cause it's kind of important, at least to the hobby, at least to a lot of people who are very serious about this. But some of you guys may be seeing those videos and thinking to yourself, well, what variety do I choose? Because Ross has so many varieties. I mean, there's literally hundreds of different fig varieties here on my property, whether they're in a container, whether they're in the ground. I mean, I probably have almost a hundred different varieties just in the ground. So you might be a little confused. You might be wondering, what do I do? I'm new to this whole thing. How do I approach this and try to build at least a couple figs or even a collection of figs that I can enjoy for the future? And I've talked a lot about this in the past and I don't know if a lot of you guys search enough on YouTube, but you could just very easily put in my name Ross Ratty, and then something like beginner figs or new varieties or something, something along that. And I'm sure I have a video. I, I hope I have a video. Um, at least we've talked about it in different podcasts or um, different longer form videos that we typically do over the winter time. Um, I've certainly talked about how to build a collection. I've talked about how to uh, obtain these trees and where to get the trees as well. Because as a beginner, you could be in two different categories. You could be somebody who doesn't really care about all these interesting varieties. You could be instead somebody who just uh, wants to have a couple fig varieties that are really good, that have a good reputation, and you can get them from just about anybody. Or you could be somebody who's really well into this, like myself, and wants to start on that path, and you, be, might, you might be looking for really interesting or more interesting varieties than just the standards. And that's kind of what I call them. And I try to keep that list or list of the standard fig varieties in a few different places. I have a, a blog, figboss.com. You can go to the blog down in the description. And we talk about a number of varieties over the, you know, the last year I've been doing these reviews on the blog to talk about the varieties that are standards that are just a cut above the rest. They have the total package for the most part, and they're usually easy to find. Um, and they have that reputation that you're mostly not going to be disappointed. And I give you all the breakdown. I give you all the reasons of why you should grow it, where it comes from, you know, uh, you know, sometimes even how to find it, you know, and then also depending on where you live, if you should grow it or not. So all these varieties are very location dependent, but you know, there are also the other places you can look is in my spreadsheet. So in my spreadsheet, I have a list of figs that are keepers or my top performing fig varieties. We have the best of the best, the varieties that unfortunately just in this current moment are a little bit harder to find. And we talk about figs like Campaneri and, and Black Celeste and Verdino del Nord, Azores Dark. But others, we have a list in that same exact spreadsheet of keepers, varieties that are really easy to find, like LSU Huye, you know, LSU Tiger, different strains of Celeste. We talk about hardy Chicago types. Um, there's so many varieties, even Violet de Bordeaux, you got Ron de Bordeaux. So, you know, these are easy to find, even a lot of nurseries at this point um, that have been selling different varieties of fruit for many, many years carry these varieties. So it's, it's pretty easy to go on like, let's say ediblelandscaping.com, pick up some varieties that'll cost you maybe 10 to $20 a piece. You get the tree, uh, maybe it's a little bit smaller and that's okay, but you have the entire collection of fig varieties that are the standards. You know, I talk about this pretty often. Varieties like Hardy Chicago, Violet de Bordeaux, even White Marseille is really a standard. Uh, you got Celeste, which they also sell. Um, their Celeste is a really good Celeste. 
Uh, I grow it here. They also have O'Rourke, which is very similar to Celeste. Uh, they even sell, I believe, LSU Purple, which is really good. Um, so there's a number of these varieties that I have in here that are not just, you know, really special, rare, interesting varieties that people don't necessarily have just yet. A lot of them actually are the standards. And I love the standards so much because again, they check all the boxes. They pretty much perform well in every single climate. I mean, even Edible Landscaping sells Smith in the form of Texas BA1, it's, it's called, which is a little confusing with all the names and I, I get that, but my Smith here put out like 50 figs this year uh, and every single one of them ripens pretty much to perfection and I enjoyed it. You know, that's really what you want out of a standard variety. You don't want to have a variety that doesn't perform well for your location, whether it doesn't even ripen the figs or it does ripen the figs and only a really small portion of the crop you actually get to enjoy. So that's what the standards are all about. Ron de Bordeaux, you know, Vila de Bordeaux, you pretty much can't go wrong. I mean, yeah, Ron de Bordeaux is probably going to split a little bit more than you'd like, but assuming you don't have fruit flies, you're going to enjoy it. Another really good recommendation for some of the standards that I like is Pastelier. You also have Negretta. You have um, other figs like Moscatel Bronco, which is a really good honey fig. Another name for it, I believe, is Corinth. Um, you could also pick up LSU Champagne, you know. Um, even a fig called Osborne Prolific is pretty good in a pretty wide variety of climates. People are big fans of Columbar of Nero, although you know, I'm not a huge fan of that particular fruit for humid places. Uh, what else do we have here that I think would really impress people? Even Moro de Caneva, I think, is becoming um, very common now. At least I'm expecting it this upcoming cutting season that pretty much every single hobbyist is going to have that particular fig. And it's just really one of the best. It really does perform so well. It ripens its figs at such an early date. Um, there are many strains of Blue Celeste or even just Celeste you would really, I think you should call them. I have a fig here called the One. There's also Stallion, Vila de Marseille. Um, there are so many of them that people have. My friend Manny grows one that I've been very interested in. Um, we also have probably Neruccio de Elba, which I think is also going to become very popular. That's one of the nice things that we did last year is we sold so many cuttings of um, some of the figs I really, really love, like Neruccio de Elba, like Moro de Caneva, like Campanieri, that I imagine at the end of this upcoming cutting season, pretty much everybody's going to have it. Here's another one here called Texas Peach that is a, a type of Celeste that you guys might actually benefit by trying to find. Also LDA and Long de Dute is really good. Um, these are typically the standards that a lot of people have. There isn't a ton of focus on them. You might even start looking for Black Madeira or Italian 258. You know, these are all very common figs. I have an Italian 258 back there. I really like this white Triana. It's, it's the biggest tree I have. Uh, it really grew quickly this year. Uh, but you could even see Italian 258 actually, I think is even taller. Um, and typically the, the both of those are very common, easy to find, very reliable figs for most people. Um, unless you got a ton of moisture, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them, but um, you yeah, that's pretty much any fig. You know, you gotta be really specific with the variety you choose when you have a lot of moisture. You know, anyone over 40 inches of rain annually is in that category. Um, so those are mainly the, the really good ones. You know, I really like Celeste. If I had to choose only three, I would choose Celeste, Hardy Chicago, and probably Vila de Bordeaux. Uh, but some people are gonna want a honey fig. And if I had to throw a honey fig in there, um, that is a standard, that's common, that's easy to find, would be a strain either of Peter's honey that is similar to Moscatel Bronco or something like this, this Corinth, which produces figs that 
are typically not so round. They're more oval-like in shape. And uh, for me, that's, that's better than your typical dotato uh, and so forth. So yeah, there's many options, many figs for you guys to enjoy. And that's the problem, right? Is you got a menu and there's too many things on the menu and you can't decide which fig do I want. So I think that's going to give you guys some great options right there. You could even choose White Marseille or LSU Champagne. I think LSU Champagne's easy, easy to find, and it's obviously a winner. So we'll see you guys soon. All right, thanks for watching this one. Again, check out the vlog. There's so much information there. And in the spreadsheet I have in the description of every video, there's so much fig information in those locations. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care.